today we're talking about deliverance and dominion over demons demons are real they are as real as the devil himself evil spirits are as real as satan though they are invisible to natural men they are recognized by their visible activities evil spirits and demons have carried out their evil and wicked operations in very many places as you look at the bible they have carried out their operations in egypt they have carried out their operation in babylon they have carried out their operations in ancient times and they are carrying out their operations in modern times in the primitive era as well as in this civilized era in villages as well as universities we know that these evil spirits have carried out their operations anywhere you can think of in the world but only in christ do we have deliverance and dominion not only just a temporary deliverance a permanent deliverance and not just an ordinary dominion a perpetual dominion and today as we come together i come to show you in the word of god how you are victorious already and all you need is just the instruction and the information to know how victorious you are permanent deliverance you are going to have perpetual dominion the lord is going to give to you there are three points we're going to consider number one specific activities of demons number two spiritual authority over demons number three supernatural affirmation of our dominion let's look at number one specific activities of demons this is very important in our lives so that whenever anything happens you'll not be saying well since it's god i accept it like that there are some people they accept sickness they accept defeat and they accept mature uh, premature death and they accept miscarriages they accept quite, quite a lot of things even sicknesses and diseases and they'll say the will of the lord be done while all the time in their lives is the will of the devil that is being done but this morning everything is going to change in our lives because you will you will recognize the specific activities of demons and when you recognize them anytime they show up in the ministry anytime they show up in your church anytime they show up in your beloved ones you'll be able to say this is of the devil and i'm not going to accept it and it will not stay in that church in that family in that locality in jesus name in luke chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 11 luke chapter 13 reading from verse 11 here we are told in the word of god as we look at these activities of the evil one it tells us in luke chapter 13 in verse 11 and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself Many people might not know that that was of the devil, but it was caused with the spirit of infirmity. And Jesus saw her, and he called, when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him and said, Unto her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God because Jesus knew it was the work of the devil and he knew that being the work of the devil he came to destroy the works of the devil and immediately that work of the devil was uh, was disposed of got to read of in verse 16 and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound it was Satan that bound the woman and Jesus recognized that and then shouldn't she be then set free loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day in Matthew chapter 12 Matthew chapter 12 looking at the specific activities of the evil one of the demons Matthew chapter 12 verse 22 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil blind and dumb do you see what the devil did here on the other side the woman bowed down could not lift up herself in this case now it was the spirit of blindness and dumbness and he, he and he healed him in so much that the blind and the dumb both speak and saw and sometimes when you hear uh, me praying or you hear some other people praying and you say spirit of blindness i blind you i bind you come out in jesus name you say is that spirit of blindness 
Is it not just maybe glaucoma or this or that? Well, we are attributing that to a spirit because that's one of the activities of demonic evil spirits. Yes, there are people that are blind because of maybe old age or whatever, but there are also people that are affected by the spirit of blindness. And then we pray that the bandage that the devil has used in covering their sight, the bandage should be removed immediately. It will be gone. In Mark chapter 9, verse 17, Mark chapter 9, verse 17, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. The father here recognized the dumbness was because of a spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and foameth, and gnasheth with the teeth, and pineth away. This epilepsy. And the father recognized it was caused by a spirit. And maybe you say that was a sickness. That was the superstition there. They know not at all. Because Jesus Christ actually healed this boy by casting out the evil spirit. And then when the disciples asked, why couldn't we cast him out? And then Jesus said, this kind of spirit will not go out but, but by prayer and fasting. So it is confirmed that the epilepsy in this case was caused by an evil spirit. And then it says in that verse 18, And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with the teeth, and pineth away. And I speak to the disciples that they shall cast him out. Not just to heal him, but to cast him out. Because they knew, he knew that that thing was caused by an evil spirit. And then in verse 25, Jesus saw that the people came together and he rebuked the spirit. Do you see that? It was uh, that evil spirit that was causing the problem that Jesus rebuked. And he called him the foul spirit, saying, Thou dumb and deaf spirit. Do you see the various names that this spirit had been called? Foul spirit, dumb spirit, deaf spirit. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him. It was a spirit that caused that epilepsy and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. And then you hear in verse 29, and he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And then we understand too that as you look at Mark chapter 5, you'll see the one that had a legion there. But that legion of spirits, the Lord did not cast them out one by one. They were perpetrating their evil, having their activities united together. And it was in that unity also that they were cast out. If you look at it from Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with chains and fetters, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke him in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And then as you have in verse 7, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. They recognized Jesus immediately. And when you have the Spirit of God upon you, they recognize you. They recognize your authority. For he had said, Come out of the man thou unclean spirit. Again, unclean spirit. If you look at verse 2, it's an unclean spirit. And if you look at this verse 8, it's an unclean spirit. And he said, What is thy name? He answered and say, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And eventually, you know the story, the Lord cast out that legion of spirit with just one word. And when the Lord cast out the uh, legion of spirit, that man became completely normal. 
and that means then all the problems that uh, you know we're thinking about maybe this is natural maybe this happened to them because they were doing this they were doing that maybe this is just uh, something you can explain away with all the medical terms yes sometimes you can do that but at other times it's an evil spirit that such work there but whatever spirit they are we're going to have authority over them do you know that all the people that Jesus healed, all the people that Jesus delivered, in fact the commentary of the Holy Spirit on those people is that they were bound by devils, they were tormented by evil spirits in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, looking at verse 38, Acts 10 verse 38, it says Jesus of Nazareth, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? Of the devil, for God was with him. Oppressed of the devil. All those torments, all those afflictions, they were the oppression of the devil, but the Lord delivered all the people. And whatever torment of the devil may be there today in anyone here and in any one of your members, you are going to have authority over them and they are all cast off, cast out in Jesus' name. The Lord tells us in First John chapter 3 verse 8. First John chapter 3 verse 8. The second part of verse 8. It tells us what Christ has come to do. And we know Jesus Christ is him yesterday, today and forever. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How many of them will Jesus destroy? All of them. Point number two, spiritual authority over demons. Spiritual authority over demons. Actually, the Lord has given us that authority. And because he has given us that authority, we need to make use of the authority he has given us in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 18. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, here we find the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's the authority the Lord has given to us. And that authority already in us will work mightily in Jesus' name. As we have that in Matthew, you also have something in Mark. In Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. If it's given to us in Matthew, and it's given to us in Mark, and it's given to us in Luke, and it's given to us in John, then we know that the Lord actually meant to gift us or to grant us the gift, casting out devils, having authority over them. Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe, and we are those believers. I said, We're those believers and that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover verse 20 and they went for and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following in luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 reading from verse 17 and the 17 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven behold i give unto you power power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy i want you to notice the word all there as a child of God and as a minister of the gospel, there is no power of the enemy that should overcome you or run you off and run you away from the ministry or destroy your ability and your authority in the Lord as you carry out the ministry. And if you have not gotten hold of it before, it is coming to you this morning. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. You will tread on them and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you 
and then who are the people that are given this power if verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven and because you are saved and because you are born again and because you have been set apart and because you are sanctified and because you are serving God because you are a child as well as a minister of the gospel a child of God and minister of the gospel the power has been given unto you you will do exploits in Jesus name in John chapter 14 you've seen it in Matthew you've seen it in Mark you've seen it in, John, in Luke now in John in John chapter 14 verse 12 John chapter 14 I'm reading in verse 12 there again he assures us here that we are going to have the same power the same authority that Jesus Christ manifested it was by the Spirit of God and because it was by the Spirit of God it's available for you it's available for me for everyone to verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do he shall do and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto the Father have you seen it very clearly now in the watch of God there is authority that is given to the believer we have parental authority and the Lord has never reversed that we have school authority as young people are coming up and growing up and they are under the school masters as we are told in Galatians we have a school authorities and then we have the master's authority you have the centurion saying I mean man under authority I say to this man go and he goes and to this man come and he cometh we have official authority when we go to our offices there, are, there is authority in the office too we have governmental authority and we know the authority of the government on the citizens if all those authorities are there and God put them in place and he has never reversed them the same thing we have spiritual authority in the spiritual realm and you are preaching in the spiritual realm and you are going to manifest that authority I said you are going to manifest that authority it's not authority over the good people of God authority over demons authority over the evil things that may tormenting members of the church and the weapon of warfare the Lord has put in your hand you are going to overcome you are going to be victorious in Jesus name in 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 4 and also from verse 5 here we are told in the word of God the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ now that authority has been given to you and you are going to manifest that authority I said you will manifest that authority it will not just be our overseers alone our regional overseers alone our national overseers alone but all the ministers as you stand and you mention the name of jesus demons will bow before you evil paths will bow before you and you will crush every enemy that is spiritual enemy tormenting the people of god in jesus name as the lord was with moses he will be with you as he was with joshua he will be with you as he was with daniel in babylon he will be with you as he was with paul and peter he will be with you in jesus name and no enemy power will be able to stand before you point number three supernatural affirmation of our dominion supernatural affirmation of our dominion you remember in the acts of the apostles in acts of the apostles chapter 13 in particular god had called uh, paul and uh, barnabas through uh, the prophecy that came the utterance or revelation that came in the holy spirit or through the holy spirit and they were sent forth by the holy spirit we're told in acts chapter 13 reading from verse 4 so they being sent forth by the holy ghost uh, it, it depends on the way you think about uh, the work you are doing the work the work the lord has placed in your hand if you are thinking uh, brother so and so our overseer sent me to such and such a place and when you meet any difficulty here this is what uh, our state overseer has gotten me into this is what our region overseer has gotten me into he sent me to this place look at what i'm facing now but if you know that it is the holy ghost that has sent you there and it is the holy ghost who has sent you for to do that thing whatever you confront over there you are going to be more than a conqueror in Jesus name so being sent forth by the Holy Ghost they departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus and when they were at Salamis 
they preached the words of God in the synagogues of the Jews and they had also John to their minister and when they had gone through the iron of Paphos they found a certain sorcerer a false prophet a Jew whose name was by Jesus which was of the deputy of the country such as Paulus a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God for but Elimas the sorcerer for so is his name by interpretation who stood there seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith then Saul who is also called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on them and let me wait you know for a moment there are some precious things in the word of God and we need to understand as we look at these things in the word of God in verse 2 it says separate unto me what's the name there no see look at it yourself separate unto me Barnabas and Saul who is first there Look at verse 7, which was with the deputy of the country, such as Pilate, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul. And then you come now to verse 9. Then, who, who is also called, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on them. Have you noticed that, you know, sometimes there are people that uh, they want to play this seniority game. Because after all, when Saul was converted and the people in Jerusalem didn't understand, wasn't it Barnabas that went for him and looked for him and brought him into the fold? And then because of the authority and because of the affection that they had for Barnabas, they accepted Saul. And then over here, when the Holy Ghost spoke, said, pray to me, it's Barnabas and Saul. And then even when they got there, it's Barnabas and Saul. But then the Holy Ghost that called them and mentioned Barnabas first, he now filled Saul, Paul the Apostle, with the Holy Ghost. And it's not the synergy game we're playing. It's just that when the Holy Ghost comes, and then the anointing comes, and the power comes upon that man, then the ministry goes on. And we're not fighting about anything. He called the English region overseers first. And then all these uh, language overseers are just appendages and they're just coming behind us. What are they going to do? Let the Holy Ghost come upon everyone. And then you'll do your work. And my brother language uh, overseer will do his work. And great will be the success of the people of God in Jesus' name. But you know, playing the seniority game, I was called first. I was called first. In fact, when you read the Acts of the Apostles, it's Paul and Paul and Paul every time. In fact, when they went to the same place, when you read chapter 14, it says they called the Paul Mercurius and then the other one Jupiter because Paul was the chief speaker because it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost that came upon him that put him there. And if the Holy Ghost has put anybody there, I don't want to belittle him. And I don't want to pull him down. I don't want to, you know, de de you know, degrade him. I don't want to talk to the congregation and say, you know, we first started, we are the English English overseers, and we are the people who are there. And the same thing in the in the city church. You know, we are English coordinators, we are language coordinators, and those people they are always behind. Let the church be the church, let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost, and let the power of God come upon English coordinators and, and language coordinators and English overseers and language overseers and Great will be the dynamite that will come out of that and the church will be marching unto victory in Jesus' name. And Saul, who also is called Paul, appealed will the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went out seeking some to lead him by the hand that is authority i say that is authority and that authority has come upon you today in jesus name you will put down every opposition of any spiritual enemy in jesus name and then the dead the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the lord i said that authority is here now i said the authority is here now will it come upon you rise up and claim that authority it is yours already 
I said it is yours already authority to cast out devil authority to destroy the works of the devil authority to open those blind eyes authority to open those deaf ears authority to manifest the mighty power of God you will do it because you are the man of the hour you are the woman of the hour no enemy will stand before you no demon will stand before you and then just be filled with the Holy Ghost every time when anybody opposes the gospel don't fight the men themselves don't fight the women themselves address the spirit in them address the evil power in them address the demons in them cast those evil spirits out and cast all those evil powers out don't be chimmy that don't be afraid of the witches and of the wizards and of the sorcerers and of the bad jesus and of whoever they are and of elimas but you stand in the authority of the lord you got power last night the anointing came upon you last night and you are getting more today as we get into the messages of today receiving the power of the holy ghost without Without waiting or without delay and then the exploits of the spirit upon the people that are selected appointed anointed and commissioned by the Lord the power is for you today and like Paul the Apostle you'll stand in that power you will move in that power you will operate in that power and you will crush all the works of the enemy by that power and the evil spirit will not be able to walk in your body not in your body anymore you are the temple of the Holy Ghost you are the temple of the Holy Ghost sickness will not reign in your body infirmity will not reign in your body and all those works of the devil they will not torment you they will not trouble you because you are more than a victor even from today you are more than a victor even from today more than a conqueror because greater is he that is in you from now on than he that is in the world greater 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 is he that is in you than he that is in the world you are now a child of victory you are now a child of victory you are now a child of victory as the Spirit of God begins to move you, speak what comes out of your mouth. Speak what comes out of your mouth. When the Spirit came upon Paul, he spoke out in authority. And then he silenced that opposition, that evil one. He'll be blind for a season. Immediately the mist came upon him and was seeking some to lead him out. That anointing is upon your life. That authority is upon you now. The word of your mouth will carry power. You're an anointed man. You're an anointed woman. And you're carrying precious, you're carrying precious ointment. You're carrying precious treasure in that earthen vessel. Be careful what you say though. Because what you say will be confirmed. What you say to your child will be confirmed. What you say to your children will be confirmed. What you say to your husband will be confirmed. What you say to those members of the church will be confirmed. What you say to the sickness will be confirmed. You carry authority in your mouth. You carry anointing in your life. You are now a man of anointing, a man of authority. A woman of anointing, a woman of authority. No evil power will defeat you or ruin your ministry anymore. You will subdue them. You will bring them under. In Jesus name we pray. Number one, you are delivered. Number two, you have dominion. And the deliverance you have is a permanent deliverance. The dominion you have is a perpetual dominion. And no evil power will bring you down anymore in Jesus name why don't you raise up that hand of victory you are victorious you are victorious never allow a thought of defeat anymore you are not the man you used to be you are not the woman you used to be you are different from today in jesus name anywhere you go those demons will clear out of the way when you are coming as a brother as a sister they say that's him that's him that's him he's coming he's coming we cannot continue here that's that lady that is the lady of power the lady of anointing she is coming she is coming we cannot continue when you get there authority gets there when you get there power gets there don't nullify that anointing with any negative language you are not the woman you used to be you are not the man you used to be you are now a man of power and authority you are now a woman of power and authority. 
whatever you say will be confirmed in Jesus name if you say your church is rich your church will be rich if you, if you say your church is prospering it will prosper your church is victorious it will be victorious if you say you don't allow sickness in that church sickness will not reign in that church you don't allow evil in that church evil will not reign in that church don't say what a bad church is this your church is not a bad church a troublesome church your church is not a troublesome church and what a pity i mean a church like this don't say that again your church is good i said your church is good and you yourself you are an anointed minister of god from today in jesus name father in the name of jesus I pray, O oh Lord, for all my brothers and all my sisters who are here. I pray, O oh Lord, anywhere the spirit of infirmity, of sickness, of evil, of curse, of yoke, of defeat, of lack, anywhere an evil spirit, a negative spirit is walking, that evil spirit I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the spirit of weakness and tiredness I cast out from the people of God, come out in Jesus' name and then now the spirit of wisdom come upon you spirit of revelation upon you and the spirit of power upon you and anointing and authority upon your life jesus name oh lord the dominion you promise your people every sister here grant them that authority and dominion in jesus name they will stand on their feet and they will march all over this country and all the countries that we have come from and i pray no evil thing will be able to stand before them everywhere you go and every land you step upon the lord has given it to you you will enter into their land and you will possess that land for jesus and the authority of the lord and the dominion of the spirit will never cease in your life in jesus name and that church the lord is building through you the gates of hell shall never be able to overcome when you open your mouth and you pray for the sick they will recover we'll hear of testimonies of blind eyes opening through you and the lame walking through you mighty power being manifested through you it is beginning now in your life and the lord has placed you on the platform of power and the platform and authority and anointing and that anointing will continue to flow in your life and you will that anointing will never cease and you will see that spirit of God moving you and shaking you and speaking the word in you and when you speak that word it will be confirmed by heaven you will be marching on you will not be tired you will be walking you will not fail all the discouragement of the past and anything the devil has brought into your life that is trying to bring you down the Lord is saying arise and put on your strength O Jerusalem and you are putting up your strength now shake yourself from the doors you are not the man you used to be and you are not the woman you used to be the anointing is resting upon you and the power is resting upon you you will be a different man in ministry and a different woman in ministry and then you will have dominion everywhere you go in jesus name evangelists rise up and evangelize and you pastor your pastor with power and when you speak the authority and the respect of the people it will be upon you because the lord has chosen you and the hand of the lord is upon you you are up you'll never be down you are climbing the ladder until you get to the top nothing will stop you almighty god will thank you because we know it is done confirm it in jesus name Thank you, Lord, because everything is all right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church is marching on. 